Hello everyone, I hope you're doing fine. My name is Skyline, and welcome to Lijiang Tower, at least Control Center, that is, anyway. I decided that I would do the King of the Hill maps in three-part series because I tried to do all three at once, and it was just a little bit too long, so we're going to do it each section at a time in separate videos. Anyway, the daily today was about a great game here on Control Center, so I figured that I would start with this one. Anyway, Control Center is a really cool map. I like it a lot, and you see interesting stuff happen here all the time for good reason. And I think that there are still quite a few things in this map that haven't been fully explored or utilized by teams in both competitive and in matchmaking. All right, as always, we'll start with the attackers. Now, there are three entrances, two main entrances into Control Center for the attackers. What are they? Well, there's this one. That's pretty obvious. This one over here should be obvious, but people very rarely remember about this one. And then there's this one over here that is only available to certain heroes with mobility. Pretty much any hero with mobility can get up here. I'd say about half the cast. First, let's go over the two main approaches that teams use here on Control Center. So the first one, assuming we're going through the main door, is simply to walk to the point. Ta -da 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 we're at the point. Cool. And the second, I'm going to call that long. The second one is this one, where we start here, we come up here, we're very hidden, very sheltered, and then suddenly, bam, point immediately appears in front of us. I'm going to call that short which makes sense because this is long and this is short. Cool. If you have a longer ranged team, you want to use long because you have a longer sight line. You can have your Widowmaker, Hanzo, Soldier, what have you, shoot from a large distance and still be able to put pressure onto the point early on. And if they have shorter range heroes, you'll be outranging them. You want to use short if you have a short ranged team, obviously. You know, Winston, uh, let's say you have a big death ball where you go in and you have lots of close range stuff. A dive composition would be one. If you have a doom fist, for example, that would be another reason. So, okay, these two paths seem pretty simple and they seem to serve very uh, different purposes. However, there are a couple particularities about these approaches that gets players bungled up all the time. And even in tournament play as well, you see this happen quite often. For example, in long, there is a natural tendency and it intuitively makes sense. Okay, I'm a long range hero. We're gonna go ahead and okay, clear that out, come over here, and now we have some cover, we can do our thing, right? But there's a big problem with this approach going into long. And the problem is, and we see this happen all the time, is there's a wall behind you, there's not enough room. So what tends to happen is if you're up against a dive comp, those are very popular, Winston, Genji, Tracer, blah, 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 all that sort of stuff. If they see you peek here, then they'll go all in, they'll dive you, all right, dive in, and now there's nowhere for you to run. You can't go back, so you might just die. Of course, there is another option. You can come and you can run away this way, but now the problem is you've lost all of your attacking pressure. You're no longer on your same approach. Now you've backed off and you're basically in your spawn. In fact, a natural tendency is to go and hide back here, and that's why so often you'll see teams come up, peek here a little bit, do their thing, get dove on, and then run back and get choked out in their spawn. It's because of that type of approach. When you're up against something like that, you need to be a little bit more aggressive so that you don't just get pushed out of your attack immediately. You need to come up here. You come in like this, you clear out that little area, and then you go boom, peek like that. And then moving up, you could go up here, peek like that, make sure that's okay. And so if you peek here and they dive you, you have a lot more room. That way you can just go and you can retreat back here. And so you're still putting pressure on, you're still attacking, you're still going forward, uh, or looking forward rather, but you, you can still retreat a little bit, right? You have a little bit more wiggle room. That's why I like this peak much better than peeking the doodad they have back here. So we come up here, okay, we clear this out, clear that out, cool. And our team is pushing forward, let's go. Now the tendency is to say, oh, the point's right there, let's go to the point. Not so, especially if you are a support or a DPS player. You don't want to be going in like this because you have lots of dangerous areas to worry about. Someone could be peeking you from there, from there, from behind there. You can see, you can't see them, right? You can't see them until you peek all the way around. All the way around. Even this one, all the way around. Not so good. You're dealing with so many areas of cover and you have no cover yourself. Instead, once you've done that, you've done that, 
come in this way. First of all, this is safe. You can see everything. Sure, technically someone could be behind here, but that's not a, that's not a position people take. But you can see everything. You're safe, and then boom, you're peeking, and now all of those areas that were extremely dangerous before, suddenly not a problem. You can see everything, and this is very very safe. Of course, you can just duck back in. You you have cover yourself. You can duck back in if anyone tries to dive you. You have access to all these health packs. Instead of going straight in, take the extra two seconds or so to come up here, and it'll be much, much better for you. Going short, not quite as much finesse required. You pretty much just go over here. You jump in as your Winston, your Doomfist, your whatever, and you just go, you jump on the supports. All right, cool. Not much to say about that, but those are just two of the ways to attack on Lijiang Tower. There are two more ways, one of which is kind of bad, and I'll explain why. The other of which I think is extremely underutilized in all levels of play. So the first one is a push outside. So if you're going long, sometimes you see this. If you're peeking this, you can easily, easily come outside if you're an attacker. And this is actually not too bad. This is fine because the cool part about this is as an attacker, you just go whoop. I'm outside, no problem, very, very fast. But as a defender, you have a much longer rotate time. Because if you're peeking this, you know, you're trying to keep the attackers off, you see that they all cross over and they're trying to go outside. Oh no, I need to go all the way over there. Ugh. And by the time you're here, most likely they're already up in a position where they can choke you out. Here's the problem with this though. It's because you can't actually come in this door. It's way, way, way too dangerous as an attacker. You can't push through there because, first of all, it's a choke point, and second of all, you have all these dangerous, awful places that defenders could be uh, peeking you from and, and hiding behind cover. Okay, so we just keep going. And now let's take a look at this. So this looks kind of promising, right? It's high ground. Except it's still not that great because we still have a very limited angle of attack. It's still pretty much a choke point, even though it's up on the high ground. And it's really not safe to dive if you're a longer range composition. Remember, these longer approaches, you tend to want more mid to long range compositions because there's no space. No space. So if a, if a Genji and a Winston or whatever jump up here with a Lucio, then you have no room. You have to back off and die. Or you come off, which again, you're coming off the lane. You're letting off your pressure on the point. You're basically not even attacking anymore. They're attacking you. Now, there is one more attacking position, and it's one that I think is incredibly underutilized here on Lijiang Tower, and it's this one. In fact, you can even just spawn in the ship, you know, make your basket, shoot some hoops, and then come over here, and ta-da, you have another entrance. This is really good for when you're being choked out at your spawn, as tends to happen here on Control Center. A lot of times, defenders will be sitting behind the doodad, they'll be sitting behind the corner, and they'll be pre preventing you from leaving through this entrance. This is the perfect time to come through here. Now, normally this would, you'd think this might be a little bit dangerous because there are a lot of choke points you have to go through, but the defender's rotation is so, so long to get to you. You know, first they need to identify that your entire team's going this way, which takes a couple seconds of lag, and then they need to go all the way over here, all the way, let's keep going here, let's keep going, bam, there. It's a very long rotation time. The defenders, especially in matchmaking, will almost never be able to stop this approach if they're choking you out at the spawn. And if they're playing up a little bit more aggressively, you can probably just punch through them anyway because they're not sitting behind cover. So, where would you go from this entrance? Now, if you can get to here unscathed, the defenders can't do much to you because they can't come through this little circle to attack your team. So, you can get into dark room pretty uh, pretty handily, or server room, whatever you want to call it. Now, server room is a great spot to launch slow pushes from. By slow pushes, that's not really a concept I've gone over before, but now everything I was talking about before in this video for attacking, we were all fast pushes. You know, you just spawn. In the case of short, for example, you just spawn, you come out, you immediately come, and you just kill them, right? Even for long, you, you spawn, you walk up here, you peek, okay, you peek, okay, you go, and you just kill them, right? You go through here. There isn't too much setup. You just walk straight in, do the entire execution all at once. Oftentimes, fast pushes are best by far in any Overwatch map because you don't want to waste time. 
if you, I would rather do six fast pushes than four slow pushes because I get more attempts, even if the slow pushes are technically a little bit better. The difference comes when you are either at, you know, you can only get one more push in anyway, you want to do a slow push, or if there's some special circumstance that's preventing you from taking the point, but you'd be really good at defending it. There are some team comps like that, like if you have a junk rat, for example, really good defending, not so good attacking. So you might want to take a little bit longer to attack knowing that you'll have a really good hold on defense. Well, anyway, Server room is really good for this. Why? Because you have access to the entire map plus this third level here. And the defenders can't see what you're doing either. So you can just have one person looking out at this, you know, looking out there. You can maybe have your tracer come over there for a long flank. You can have your soldier come up and do this. You can pretty much do whatever you want. You can set it up however you please. And as a result, the defenders pretty much just have to sit here and wait for you. But basically, the defenders are blind here. And imagine if you're defending and suddenly you have three players push through here, the tanks and support and such. You have a DPS immediately materialize up there while a flanker comes over here. And, you know, maybe even you have another DPS who flanks around. Like, you can launch such an insane attack from Darkroom. It takes a tremendous amount of time to set up, but this is by far the strongest attack on all of Li Zhang Tower. And if it's properly executed, it's pretty much impossible to stop if both teams play it evenly, right? It's going to take some serious plays by the defenders to stop that. Speaking of the defenders, though, that is all we have for the attacker side of Control Center. Let's talk a little bit about defense. So I said that this place is pretty good for defense, and it is. If you have a soldier, a widow, or Hanzo or something, they can hold this long angle very, very easily. This is just a pretty great default location that works, uh, you know, in most team comps and most scenarios. So if you are playing those heroes, I definitely recommend you defend from this location. The only thing, though, that you need to be a little bit specific, you can't be too greedy. You can't be up here against a dive composition because if they dive you, well, uh, it's, you're in big trouble. But if you sit back here, it's really not a problem, either up here or back here, because if they dive you, then you can just immediately go. So notice how you immediately go into safety. There's a door right here, and now you can reset. This is another good angle that you can take. This place is not that great of a defensive location, despite what it kind of looks like, because, okay, let's say that you are a soldier, you have visor, you're up here, that's cool, that's pretty good. Sometimes it's good, right? But the problem is you're now alleviating all pressure on the attackers, because if your soldier's up here, that means he's not down here, protecting any of these angles. He's not over here, protecting the approach from short. Basically, you're only effective once they've already gone onto the point. And giving the attackers that much room to pressure you pretty much negates all of the tactical advantage that this location gives you. Now, the way this map is designed, once you have a lot of control over the map, you know, you've wiped them a couple times, you have time to sort of go wherever you want as defenders, Putting on pressure is great because we already talked about how difficult it is to actually get out of spawn here on Lijiang Tower on Control Center. So putting up pressure and posting up is very, very strong. Plus the defenders don't really have any cover back here. This is all just open space. So they're very vulnerable to be shot at all the way up until they get out of this door. Overall, I would definitely say that this map is at least a bit defender sided. So a lot of the defense comes pretty naturally. It's pretty intuitive. So I'm going to be much shorter here than on attack. Essentially though, you just want to be holding good proper angles that keep pressure on the attackers. This angle, for example, is pretty good because you can put pressure on them down long. Plus you're safe from any push up short and you can even technically, I mean, if they have someone up there, you're technically safe from that as well. Wow. So having gone through this video, it's a good idea. I decided, I decided to split it into three parts because that was so much stuff. Anyway, leave your tricks, tips, and uh, super special secret strategies for Control Center in the comments section below. Um, never forget to stay positive and have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.